British bank holiday and typically it's raining, but the second Touch Tennis Masters of the Year has attracted another full entry list for this event in South West London. Welcome to the National Tennis Centre in Roehampton, the perfect setting for the second Touch Tennis Masters event of the year with Pascal Huser. The weather may have forced us undercover, but will anyone reign on the parade of Simon Roberts? Last year's winner has stormed into 2017. He's already taken one Masters title and the world number one spot. But with a full ladies lineup, don't think it'll be a walk in the park for Selena Coburn either. Not if Joe Horn has her say. Let battles commence. So all the top seeds are here and there are competitions in the men's and women's singles, plus the doubles and 128 players in the open event, making for a day packed with action. So how does it work? Well, the compact court is around a quarter the size of the traditional game and the singles is played without using the tram lines, meaning the court is 5 metres wide by 12 metres long. Players serve diagonally into the opponent's service box and if it clips the tape and goes over, it's considered in play as there are no lets. And crucially, there are no second serves in touch tennis. Games are played with standard tennis scoring, but with sudden death point at juice, where the receiver chooses which side the serve is delivered. Sets are played to four games. If a set reaches four games all, then a tie break is played to five points, with a sudden death point at four all to decide the set. The first player to win two sets wins the match. The current world number one is Simon Roberts from Bolton, who's won an incredible 41 of his last 42 matches and five consecutive tournaments. I want to ask you about 2017 so far. Last time we spoke, you were crowned victor <laughs> in Portsmouth. Yeah. You wanted the number one spot, you got it. How yeah. important was that to you? <laughs> it was brilliant. Uh, I've been missing from the sport for the last year, so I wanted to get playing more this year and try and recapture the number one spot, so I'm glad I managed to do it. How hard is that when you are unbeaten in the last five, you have stormed 2017, to still maintain that level and push on? Yeah, it's pretty tough because obviously <laughs> everyone expects you to win all the time, which <laughs> is impossible. No one can win all the time. So I've just got to just <laughs> try and find a way to do my best and battle through even when I'm not playing well or other players are playing better on the day. Adam Hassan is probably the name that, that comes straight to my mind. He's improving every time. Is he the one to watch out for? Yeah, he's definitely one of the big opponents to watch out for. Because every time I play him, he always seems to have my number for 99% of the match. And then I somehow managed to edge at the end, but I don't know how. So, oh, such a good point. I thought Hassan had done enough okay. with the volley. Somehow Roberts got there. Through the day, there were some excellent battles and Simon is among the quarter-finalists with all of the top seeds still involved. Six seeds, Stu Sal faces number three seed Adam Hassan as we join commentators Adam Fielder and Mikey Pereira for the highlights. Baudry does there and he's caught out. Sell says not this time. Oh, it's a stunning touch. Again, opting for that serve volley that we spoke about earlier. 15-30. That's a tremendous return as well from Serlu. Hasn't given up on this game just yet. It's a good example, this, this matchup, that different physiques can really thrive at this, this sport. Stucel, six foot, broad. Hassan a slight 5-6. Yes, a stunning shot. pass and a big celebration as well. Don't get too much better than that. Yeah, great return. It was a good serve, but Hassan made it awkward. Yeah, nice change-up. I think that's something we're going to have to see a little bit more of from... Stu Searle, if he is to find a way back into this one. Hassan has match points. Which he takes in style. And it's yet another semi-final Masters appearance for Adam Hassan. 
4-1-4 love and uh, well he's certainly a force to be reckoned with this uh, tournament. Next up, it's Ashley Knees facing Matt Pearce, ranked to only 42nd, but who's had a fabulous event so far. We join their match in the second set. Yeah, it's one of the best points of the match that Pierce has constructed. Again, just working his way forward. And the defensive lob just wasn't quite good enough from Neves. An easy overhead again. So 40-30. He has uh, another match point. Oh, has oh, well, it crept okay. through? No, it hasn't. Set it's into the net. Pierce. And Matt Pierce survives. Neves did his best to try and come back, but in the end, Pierce was four just two, good enough. Four two. And he books his spot into the semi final. The third quarter final pitches ninth seed Matt Gollidge against former world number one, now the second seed Elliot Mould, in what promises to be a cracking match. He's made it. Incredible lob from Elliot Mould. That's two that he's played in this match already. That was exceptionally good. Yeah, really turning it on now is Matt Gollidge. And Elliot Mould doesn't have an answer at the moment. Gollidge, 40 love. Done really well to turn this opening set round. Well, again, he's played three lobs in this match, Four Elliot Mould, and every single one of them has been inch perfect. So 40 30. This would guarantee himself uh, at least a tie break. A oh, wonderful cross court forehand from Elliot Mould. Couldn't have played it any better if he tried. Oh, what a return from Gollidge. Lent into the forehand and before Mould even had a chance to look up, the ball was past him. Just the game that Gollidge wanted. Oh, the ball's broken again. Yeah, it's split in half. That's twice that they're carrying on here. I think they are carrying on. They are carrying on. Well, they've got to count that. They are at yeah, the end. the end. Well, what a bizarre point, but it's gone the way of Gollidge. Oh, some amazing volleying. Mould was hammering those balls back at Gollidge and somehow he found a way to get every one of them back and then the overhead was exceptional to win the point. Yeah, nicely done. And Mould breaks. Well, unsurprisingly, Elliot Mould into yet another semi-final. And after a very hard-fought opening set, it was a much easier second set from the world number two. Moving through the last of the quarterfinals, as expected, Simon Roberts defeated Ed Percival in straight sets and is now paired against Matt Pearce in the first of the semi-finals. Yeah, great point. Juice. Came forward. I don't think Pierce saw him out the Five corner of his eye. Points. It just happened so quickly and very comfortable volley. Oh, 
Oh, has it just caught the line? Yes, it has. He decided to leave it, Pierce. It was a risk. The volley was there, wasn't it, for him to take on? Well, that's what it takes to actually win a point off him. Had to win it three or four times. He did well to get a few balls back, Simon Roberts, including that one. Good overhead in the end. That's the way he has to play. And that point there, I just think, serve big, get in, and, and make him come up with a pass, because in such a small court, it's not easy. Oh, it's a stunning pass. Shot of the match from Simon Roberts. Yeah, the consistency level of Roberts is just ridiculous, isn't it? As you say, a lot of the points, they have been evenly contested, but... And there's another incredible forehand pass. I don't know what he's apologising for. I think he shanked the return yeah, a little bit. It's a weird it. bounce, yeah. That's two cross-court forehand passes that he's played. It's been fairly easy for Simon Roberts, has it? Points have been evenly contested, lengthy rallies. And it just gets better and better from Simon Roberts. That forehand is certainly motoring now. He's starting to become a little bit more aggressive, isn't he? He's starting to take a few more risks now that he's comfortable in the match. And Simon Roberts with match points. Well, he's the number one seed for a reason. Another stunning performance from Simon Roberts, who books his spot in yet another final. So Simon Roberts reaches the final of his sixth straight competition, but now he faces the skill of number two seed Elliot Mould. It's also been a fabulous women's event, and Jo Horn has reached the final. Can she now take the title? So there you have it. We now know who our finalists are. Some excellent touch tennis played by Simon Roberts. The big surprise of the afternoon was Joe Horn beating world number one Selena Coburn. Join us after the break to find out if they'll go all the way in the finals. Welcome back to the National Tennis Centre for the second Touch Tennis Masters event of 2017 with Pascal Fuser. Can Simon Roberts make it three out of three? Can Joe Horn go all the way in the finals? Let's find out. Joe Horn is an ex-junior world-ranked tennis player who took up the sport two years ago. Now 25, she's quickly moved up the rankings to become number two in the world. When I was younger, I used to play a lot of tennis. I played full-time until the age of 17. Um, and then I got, I slipped on the tennis court and got a really bad back injury. Then I w went to university, started working and uh, met my boyfriend and he was playing touch tennis and he introduced me to it and I got into it straight away and being the competitive person that I am is it, absolutely brilliant because I don't get that opportunity on a tennis court anymore whereas I can go onto a touch tennis court and smack a ball around and uh, compete so it's nice. Okay, so you're second in the rankings. Yes. Eyeing that top spot. Yeah, Selena's got that number one spot, but I will be trying to get that by the end of the year, I hope. <laughs> what are you hoping to do today? Um, I'm, going, I'm going for the win, but it's, it's all about participating, really, and there's a few good girls playing today, so we'll, we'll, just, we'll just see how it goes. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get there. As a sport, touch tennis is rising in popularity all the time. Tennis professional Emily Webley-Smith explains what attracts her to it. Sprinkling a little bit of stardust and glamour uh, on the proceedings. Not your first touch tennis event. You've actually been involved as a player. Yeah, I've played a couple um, and I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, we don't have a lot of time back from travelling um, from playing the big version of the game. But when I am back and um, I'm around, it's a really nice thing to come and support. How have you seen it grown over those few years and where do you think it could go? 
It's incredible the the commitment from Rashid and from the team that he's got around him, um, but the enthusiasm of all the players and the spirit amongst them, I think, is what has made it grow so quickly. Um, but it's astronomical from how it started to now and an event like this with this many players and how competitive it is, how the levels improved um, and also the accessibility to everywhere around the country and the world now as well um, is phenomenal. Reaching the women's final, Jo Horn took down world number one Selena Coburn in a tough three-set battle and now faces Tila Annis from Estonia. Amazing return from Joe there. Yeah, it's an absolute thunderbolt from uh, Joe. She is a, a tower player. She can really hit it cleanly. Oh. That's a touch of class oh, as Joe Horn oh. fires that one away and she is creeping towards the finish line in this first set. And that is fired away in some style, and it is Horn who just continues on her merry way. Championship points. And it is Joe Horn who reigns here in Roehampton. A brilliant win, and a brilliant performance all afternoon. Joe, walk us through that final if you would. Yeah, I mean, it started off tough just trying to feel how she plays. She's a new player to touch tennis, so I didn't really know what to expect. So, yeah, got a flow and then gradually picked up from there and, and, and got, got my own flow. She wants to watch out for in the future? Absolutely. I think, it, firstly, it's been absolutely incredible to have the amount of females playing today. Um, I think that's just been huge compared to in the past. And every single girl that has played has done absolutely amazing. But. The fact that that was her first event and she, she got to the final was just incredible. And yeah, yeah she, you can just tell that she's going to be good in the future. How important is it for you to have won? Yeah, it's just, it's just amazing. Um, I mean, I've played a few events now. That this is probably the third or fourth female event that I've played. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just really nice. And to play at the National Tennis Centre is such a wonderful venue. What's your next target? What's for the next year? What are you hoping? Yeah, so I think I think I want it, I want that number one spot. I haven't had it yet. So <laughs> Selena, watch out. <laughs> and so now moving into the men's final after Elliot Mould beat number three seed Adam Hassan in straight sets. It's the top two seeds facing off in the final. Simon Roberts against Elliot Mould. Points. Fantastic. That's one of the points of the day without a doubt. 15 love. <laughs> oh, good volley. Great Game volley. Hold. Under pressure, that was an important hold. Well, that's nice. Decided to come forward. 30, 50. And maybe we're going to see a little bit more of that. Yes, it can just change so quickly. I mean, Roberts has been in control, but Mould could suddenly get back onto level terms. That's Which exactly is what he does. does. Again, coming forward, having success at the net. One game more. And Elliot Mould does break straight back in this second set. This second set, they're just matching each other stride for stride at the moment. Oh, Elliot Mould wonderful with a return. Car, 30. The return of the match from Elliot Mould again, deciding to take it early. And look how pinpoint that was. Oh, it's a wonderful rally. I think Mould will be a little disappointed that he didn't do more, but 
look at the pace from Roberts to get across the court. Old. But just that lob, I think he could have got it a little bit deeper. And Roberts is just saying, this is mine now. I want this trophy. I am going to get it. And it's long. Game. Roberts yeah. reigns in Roehampton. He's not called the machine for nothing. Simon and it Roberts. was a machine-like performance today from the number one seed. Simon, 4-2-4-1. It looks easier on the scoreboard than perhaps it was on court. Is that fair? Yeah, definitely fair. I was 2 love up. I started really strong. And then he got back to 2 all, 40-15 up. And the tide was turning a little bit. So I knew I, I knew it was a key game. I managed to hold on there and then Luckily, got the first set after being at game points down, and then I think I got got my eye in and played even better in the second. Are you aware of your ability to switch the game and turn it around? Is that a tactic that you play? Because everyone I interview that's been beaten by you says the same thing. You just have this ability to switch a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think because I'm not the most strongest player. I mean, everyone's a lot stronger than me, so I have to use like more tactics than other players. So when I'm down, I have to figure out what they're doing and what I need to do better, and then hopefully I do it OK. Congratulations. Thank you. Receiving her trophy, Jo Horn celebrates her victory, adding valuable world ranking points to her tally. And it's Simon Roberts who receives the winner's trophy at the Pascal Huser British Masters. So there you have it, our two victors for this afternoon. It's three out of three for Simon Roberts. Also, congratulations to Jo Horn taking the ladies' title. Do hope you can join us again next time when we're in Weybridge.